Okay, okay, okay. Hello, 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 and welcome to night two, folks. Night two of NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver. We are back again, not on USA anymore, but on the Peacock Network or however you watch this show tonight. I keep forgetting to have a pre-show on this damn show. I didn't watch it till it got actually, you know, to the main show and whatnot, but I guess there was a pre-show match between Dane and uh, Spud versus, um, who did they go against? Brazongo? Yeah, I think Dane and Spud won that match. I didn't see it. I'm just saying it now since there was a, um, you know, a pre-show and whatnot. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, since there was a pre-show, might as well talk a little bit about that. But let's move on to the main show, actually. All right. The main show. Uh, we do kick it off, though, with the Cruiserweight title on the line. Well, I should say both Cruiserweight titles, the regular and the Interim one to unify the belts. Basically, we're trying to recreate WrestleMania 10 here in a ladder match. They haven't done it since, you know, well, I wouldn't say haven't done it, but, you know, with the double title thing and the same belt when it was Shawn Michaels and Deep and um, Razor Ramon. Wow, I always keep messing up that last part. But, uh, yeah, this time we got Santos Escobar and Jordan Devlin. And how was this match really going to go? Crazy stuff, I should say, and a very good opener for the Cruiserweights uh, to kick off the show, all right? Especially in a ladder match. Um, now, some would argue... Now, I, here's the argument I want to make real quick uh, before I move on with this match. And this has to do with the crowd and whatnot, or if the pipe in cheers in, because it looks like uh, some of the crowd, and I don't know how many of those people out there are real fans of this Performance Center students, some were chanting, uh, you know, let's go Santos, but it's almost like they tried to put booze in the uh, piped-in crowd noise. I can't really make sure which one is, like, the real crowd and who's the fake one, but they look like they were um, on uh, Santos' side, almost kind of him coming off as a face in a way, okay? But um, as this match went on, no. Uh, well, Escobar got a ladder thrown into the ring, basically throwing Devlin into it, uh, which was on a turnbuckle and whatnot. Um, Santos basically then taking Devlin down a big uh, running Meteora onto the uh, fence to the outside, throwing him around uh, as he climbed the ladder. Uh, right after that, uh, basically, Santos giving a, well, like he shotgun drop kicked the ladder onto uh, Devlin, basically going to his gut then, which um, I guess he got his leg caught in there. Which he started kicking uh, Devlin in after that. Uh, I basically called uh, Devlin Cabron. <laughs> Cabron means dumbass in Spanish. So I think you should look that up. Hey, Naito taught me that. But, um... Yeah, that is what it means. Yeah, it means dumbass in Spanish. But, uh, yeah. Devlin basically uh, took Escobar, threw him into the ladder then. Hit himself with a shotgun drop kick. Basically, um, knocking him uh, upside the ladder then. Um... It was a lot of crazy spots in this uh, match. Escobar hitting the um, big suicide dive to the outside then. Uh, basically uh, still stomping onto um, Devlin, but Devlin was able to get him on the edge of the ladder, knocking him into it, hitting him with a high knee, hitting him with a big Spanish fly, I should say the first Spanish fly of this match, then a Tornado DDT. Um, they had another ladder up then after that. Um, Esco he knocked Devlin not Escobar off the ladder, but Devlin ended up hitting him with a big moonsault then, which looked pretty crazy out there. Devlin uh, pushed Santos to the outside. He went up the ladder until Legato El Fantasma came El Fantasma came out. Basically, they pushed him off the ladder in a very bad-looking fall almost. They kind of beat him up a little, and then they left, which um, they didn't really add much to this match, now that you think about it, because, like, all right, they were out there, and they didn't really do much. It's not like they helped Santos climb the, you know, ladder all the way back up, but he just, they just kind of, like, you know, knocked Devlin down, and they punched him a couple times, and then they left, okay? But Santos went back up for the belts then. Devlin stopped them. They both went up the ladder. He hit him with a Spanish fly off the ladder then after that, which um, I think he was bleeding in from his shoulder. Devlin had climbed up the ladder. Santos got back up there. They both punched each other, but Santos hit him with a big Headbutt then, basically knocking Devlin back, going through one of the ladders uh, by the turnbuckle, and Santos ended up getting the Cruiserweight titles, becoming the, I guess, um, somewhat unified Cruiserweight champion, as he celebrated with his son, I'm going to assume that was his son, the kid on, up on stage, and the rest of the Gato del Fantasma, okay? A uh, couple things to say about this match. Like I said, great opener. Um, I figured Santos was going to win, because I felt like he needed the win, given the way they've been booking him lately as Cruiserweight Champion, and I think he needed a big win after getting the shit kicked out of him by Cross. His whole crew got destroyed by Cross, but um, I feel like he needed a big win. Uh, Devlin, he wasn't bad in this match. I just don't think a lot of people 
new enough on him and everything. I'm sure he'll be back on um, the UK show and everything. Because let's remember, this guy was Cruiserweight champion. I forgot the guy was Cruiserweight champion. But, getting, but like I said before, the pandemic really messed a lot of things up. And apparently, I think, it, I think he was fired from this company before I could have swore. Because, you know, my friend Stephen brought this up to me. He felt like the reason why Santos swore, I don't want to go on um say he was wrong, but he kind of brought that whole speaking, what was that, that speaking out movement and everything that had to affect this match. I don't really think it did. I think that was really irrelevant to this match. I just think Santos won because he needed to win, and that's what was going on because he got, you know, he just lost before, and I think he needed to win to bounce back. Devlin, we barely know or really even see this guy, so I kind of see why he lost. I don't think that speaking out stuff has nothing to do with it. And then again, didn't he beat the case anyway? So I think that's kind of irrelevant uh, from what went on in this match. I don't know what he was talking about when bringing that up. But, um, yeah, like I said, uh, Santos uh, getting the win. So, um, I don't know. Something he doesn't really need the Cruiserweight title, which is kind of true. I know some will say he should go up to the main roster or he's all misses replacement. Say so he's like almost a better version of um, all miss and whatnot. I'm not sure about that. Some would you know, argue and debate that, which I could see, but I don't think he's going to the main roster right now, but he could be in the heavyweight division and still be in the cruiserweights, because, come on, let's look at Santos's time as cruiserweight champion. He hasn't really had a lot of competition on his show, and then the people they bring from 205, we don't even know who these people even are, because, number one, I don't watch 205 Live, so I don't really care who really is the cruiserweight champion, or whoever, I don't even know who they got fighting for the cruiserweight title over there, so... Like I said, very fun ladder match to kick off the show. But, uh, yeah, Santos getting a big win, so I'm cool with that. Um, next, though, NXT um, women's tag titles on the line. Ember Moon, Shotzi Blackheart versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Um, good match. I think everybody kind of knew who was going to win. Uh, very scary stuff, I should say, in this match from uh, what Shotzi Blackheart almost killing herself. Well, dying damn near doing a freaking suicide dive. I almost fall on her damn head and neck. That was brutal to watch. Uh, I did like Ember Moon's little tribute to uh, Road Dog doing the punches and then doing the uh, suck it thing. So, um, yo, good to hear that Road Dog is doing better, though, after that whole um, heart attack about, I think it was almost over a week ago or whatnot. I don't think it was a heart attack, but they thought it was. But it's good to hear that the guy is doing better because that guy's him as one of my favorite members of uh, DX. So I'm glad to see that the. Uh, the do double G is doing uh, good, okay? So, yeah. I, I guess, oh, you didn't know your ass better call somebody. I'm not going to do the whole intro right now, but I love doing that to this day. But, um, like I said before, the tag match itself, very good match. Double Eclipse and then a senton by uh, Shotzi onto um, Hartwell for the win. So, it's not much I can really say from this tag match, but I never thought Candice and them were really going to win anyway. So, um. You just knew Shotzi and Moon were just going to win. This was just kind of added at the last second anyways to take over. Like I said, it wasn't a bad tag match or anything, but um, I never believed that they were going to lose the belts. Okay, but I will say this. Shotzi, man, got to chill out with those dives because damn near killing yourself out there. Uh, One kind of important note, in a way, was when they went to, um, I guess they went to the ringside and I guess they had uh, Gable Stevenson, uh, NCAA amateur wrestler, Olympian and whatnot. Stephanie McMahon, who who has to stand there to try to get herself over and whatnot. But, um, you know, I will say I've heard about this guy. Um, I've heard his name here and there. Apparently, he trained with Brock, I believe. I think this is to him. Um, I, I, I know I saw some photos of him training with Brock. I think he's like a mentor or something. Some say this guy's the next Brock. But then you know, they said that Parker... Bordeaux guys next Brock. I, I signed a lot of collegiate athletes lately, and I keep hearing, um, well, this guy's next Brock. This guy's next Brock. How do you know if all these guys are the next Brock? Okay, yeah, this guy worked with Brock, but is he the next Brock? We don't know, okay? I can't really determine. I just heard of the guy. So, um, I just heard he trained with Brock, and I seen photos, all right? That's all I know. He, he just, he knows Lesnar. But, um, moving on from that, Johnny Gargano, War Machine, Iron Man, it was War Machine, not Iron Man, but uh, he went against Bronson Reed 24 hours after he won that um, gauntlet match. Now, this is a match I see people had a lot of problems with, and even I had some problems with this match myself. Some would say, why does Bronson Reed need to go this long with Gargano, who is way smaller than him? They think this would probably be a squash match in a way, which I wouldn't be mad if Bronson Reed did that. 
And I actually thought he was going to win this match here tonight for the title, but apparently I'm wrong. I would have actually, you know, I actually would have thought that. But no, it did not happen. Um, what what could I really say from this? It wasn't a bad match. Uh, some would sit there and tell you, and I know it's a lot of no-selling when it comes to takeover matches, but come on, we see a lot of no-selling, especially from Gargano, okay? I'm going to get to that part in a second, all right? Uh, I know Austin Theory was out there during this match. Reed, uh, who was dodging Gargano's moves a lot and whatnot, but, you know, Gargano, you know, you know dodging the Tsunami Splash, um, you know, Reed kicking out, uh, basically, you know, still trying to go for the uh, Tsunami Splash, but Austin Theory got involved. Uh, at one point, which Gargano had uh, got him on the ropes, crotched him in, tried to hit him with, um, no, he tried to go Frankenstein, but he got hit with a power bomb, and I guess he went through the bottom rope so he couldn't pin him, and the next thing you know, Reed, he hits um, Gargano with a freaking, uh, what, what was it, a razor's edge into the ring, and he no-sells it. That's something I had a problem with, okay? This dude... No soul to freaking razor's edge getting thrown into the ring and got up like it wasn't shit. So I had a problem with that. Uh, just no selling that move. Um, what was it then? Because um, after the bottom rope, I know I'm reading up in like a dive onto um, onto Austin Theory outside. Gargano uh, end up getting the one. No, he tried to go for the one final beat, but it didn't work. Uh, Gargano got him with some super kicks. Then after that, Reed was still up. Um, Gargano, he knocked Gargano down with a super kick then. He tried to go for the, a moonsault in a way, but um, Gargano out, got out the way. He had one final beat DDT, and then he hit another one, and uh, basically got hit him with his knees and whatnot too. So, yeah, Johnny Gargano still retained the North American Championship. I actually thought, like I said, I thought Bronson Reed was going to win. Some would say he only had 24 hours to prepare, but um, I, I don't know, man. I'm, this whole way gimmick thing, I'm kind of up and down on it half the time. I know motherfuckers I know that will hate this gimmick way worse. I probably only know like one friend that only likes the whole Gargano thing. But um, I actually thought Bronson Reed was actually going to walk away with this title here tonight. So um, didn't really expect that to happen. Some would say, was this Johnny Takeover here? Was this Johnny Takeover? I don't know. Okay, I'm not even sure. But some will sit there and tell you why is Breed just, not Breed, but uh, Reed selling as much to Gargano and have to move Gargano's hitting not even hitting Bronson Reed, which I saw that too. So they're not wrong. And whatnot, but um, wow, you like I said, you just want to talk about no selling a lot. It's um, not no selling, but um, Reed selling that much to um, Gargano a lot would say it didn't that make sense, okay? But um, yeah, freaking Gargano still won the title, so there you go. Next, NXT title on the line, which I actually thought this was going to be the main event, I was very surprised by that. But given the build of this feud and how weird it's kind of been. I can somewhat understand why this was not the main event now. But Cross came out, kind of having like some gladiator type of gear come out. You know, still kind of with Scarlett Bordeaux. Finn Balor, who almost kind of had like all the screens, you know, kind of putting his highlights on there for winning the NXT title, Universal title, even being the Demon, which even I thought the Demon was going to be in this match. I'm like, well, it's TakeOver. He's got to bring the Demon out this time. But no, he only had like a giant red X on his chest standing away. Um, as he went one on one with Killer Cross right there, this match was crazy. All right, um, I like this. I was very surprised Balor get, got this much offense. I didn't think Balor was gonna get this much offense on the Cross because Cross they damn they have nearly no sell everything and um he just kills you in under a few minutes. But um, Balor was giving him some go. Balor gave him some real um go out there, okay, he was getting a lot of offense on the cross, which even I didn't expect to happen, because, uh, what, Balor, I know he got him into, the, um, freaking choke and whatnot, but Cross able to pick him up, kind of throwing him around and whatnot, um, well, what, what else was in this match, uh, Balor going for his arm throughout most of this match, trying to put him into, a, like, a, what, hamlock fakes, focusing on the shoulder, because, you know, uh, Cross's injury was, like, a bad shoulder that took him out, and whatnot, so he was focusing on that, but Cross able to take Balor down with a big Northern Lights, and then hit him with a big Lariat then, he was gonna go for the Doomsday Saito, but, uh, Balor got him with some kicks then after that, trying to stretch him out, but he hit him with a Sling Blade, um, he was gonna go for the Shotgun Drop Kick, but Cross was able to get out of that, um, he took Balor down with a Doomsday Saito, but, um, before he could try to, um, he tried to get this big forearm thing, but Balor got him with the Pele kicked in. 
He had two shotgun drop kicks onto um onto a cross into the turnbuckle. Balor hit the coup de gras in after that. But when he went for the pin, Cross put him into the cross jacket. Balor was able to get out of there. He got him with another double uh, foot stomp. He hit him with another PK kick and whatnot. Even kicking him into like his arm or the bad arm or whatnot. And just kind of put him into like a some submission hold in. Scarlett's yelling. Cross was able to get out of it. He starts beating the hell out of Finn Balor in the back of his like neck and everything with several forearms. He had a big German suplex on the Balor. Another Saito suplex. And uh, he hit him with it one more big shot, uh, his big forearm to the back of the neck, winning the match. Or he, no, he gave him a second one then. He hit him with one, but he hit him with one more then, and he was done and Cross won the NXT title. So, listen, we knew Cross was going to get the belt back. Some would actually believe Balor was probably going to ret- uh, still retain, and maybe Cross um, would go on to the main roster, because I've seen a lot of people say that, which I could understand that, too. Uh, like I said, this match was very hard-hitting. But we all know who's going to win. I was surprised Balor got that much offense in this match. Um, like I said, the, the feud and the build was kind of weird anyways. I look at Finn Balor's title run. And don't get me wrong. They made ben, Finn Balor look almost damn near super strong in NXT ever since he came back. I look at his run as NXT champion. And you look at the opponents my friend brought up. Like, how many opponents did Balor really face while holding the NXT title? The biggest missed opportunity I think they really could have done while he was champion was do Balor versus Kushida. When Kushida was getting all those wins, but they never did that for some reason. Some would say Balor can still go on face Walter since that didn't happen last year. But um, you look at his title reign and who he beat. O'Reilly two times. Cole. Uh, Pete Dunne. Um, we already know how he won the title, um, during that Super Tuesday thing, uh, you know, with Cole again on there, um, who else did Ballard face, I'm trying to go by for the title wise, just not, um, all his wins in general, but, what are, how many wins did he have as champion, I'm trying to see who else did he face, um, during that time, because he faced a lot of people, uh, during the time and whatnot, I know he got hurt at one point, though, due to his job, but, you know, he did get some wins, though. Cross, now the question is, who do you put against Cross next for the title? Some would say, do you put him against Dexter Loomis? Do you put him against Walter, since both of those guys are nearly the same size? I don't know who you put against Cross next, but we knew he was going to get the NXT title back. Where Balor goes from here, I don't know. Maybe it's a rematch. I'm not really sure. Some are going to say, could he go back to the main roster? I don't know. If he's going to be booked like the Balor he is right now, then I'm all for it, but I don't see that happening. Uh, But, you know... Uh, still, he did look strong in defeat, so I didn't really expect him to get this much offense, though. But Cross, uh, we just knew it was coming. We knew it was coming for a long time. It was the inevitable and whatnot. So, yes, Killer Cross is the new NXT champion, okay? So, uh, there you go, all right? But now we move on into the main event, a very, very long main event, I should say, and an unsanctioned match between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Both men having um, security guards coming out there with new theme music. No more uh, shock to the system and whatnot. Basically, this match started off with a freaking slugfest with both men punching the shit out of each other and whatnot. Um, throwing each other into the damn plexiglass onto the outside. Um, uh, outside and whatnot. They got a chair then involved. Um, you know, O'Reilly doing like a big knee onto um, Cole sitting onto the chair. One of the chairs had like the Undisputed Air logo on it. Cole tried to, you know, stick it into his neck and whatnot, but um, O'Reilly was able to get out of it then. They kept using that undisputed air chair out there, I see. Um, but like I said, Cole started yelling at O'Reilly then, saying, you know, I made you who you are. You, you owe me and whatnot, but O'Reilly got back up then, basically taking Cole onto the ground then, put him into a heel hook. But, um, you know, Cole was able to roll on the outside then after that and get out of there. O'Reilly went after him then. Um, O'Reilly started throwing like a... Ch- well, he hit him with another chair, I know that. And gave him a neck breaker then. Since they had a chain involved then after that. So they had the chain on the ropes. And even using the chain, which actually some cool combination moves when you think about it. Uh, just from a neck breaker using the chain. Or hitting him with a forearm and whatnot. Um, O'Reilly using... Tying the chain to his boot and using it as a weapon to start kicking Cole. Which was actually pretty cool. And even uh, putting him... Um, not putting him in a figure four lock, but like, you know, just using the chain just to keep kicking him. No, Cole, he was able to get the figure four lock, but uh, it did not work. Uh, O'Reilly was able to get out of it, punching Cole's legs. 
Uh, O'Reilly, once again, uh, using the chain, uh, hit him with a lung blow. Not a lung blower, but, you know, Cole used it to use a lung blower then as he went for the pin. Still didn't work. Uh, what was it? Cole gave him a German suplex then onto, like, one of the chairs. Um, which, yeah, he threw him into the chairs. He sat there, and Cole gave him a big last shot then, which you know, O'Reilly still kicked out at two. Uh, the steel steps got involved then. Kyle, once again, was going to try to go for, not Kyle, but um, Cole was going to use that big suplex onto those steps then. But O'Reilly got him with a guillotine choke then. Basically, DT him onto the steps after that. Uh, trying to get him back into the ring. Hit him with a boot then. And then they get to the announce table. And what happens? Kyle O'Reilly hits Cole with a brain buster on the announce table. But the table did not break. Botchamania. I am the table. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Uh, so, yeah. No table breaking here. But Cole bounced the hell off that table, though. And it looked deadly. Uh, Cole got out of the way then. He hit O'Reilly with a big flat screen TV and got a toolbox then. And uh, I guess he had some pliers to gonna try to jam it in O'Reilly's eye or something like that. And even a tire iron then after, which, um, you know, O'Reilly got him with the tire iron. Uh, Cole was able to get him then, basically hitting him with the um, tire iron again. Uh, O'Reilly got the chain and whatnot and started wrapping around Cole's arm. Basically put him into a um, submission hold then after that. But um, Cole got out of it by hitting O'Reilly with the freaking tire iron then. Basically backing him off. Um, they start punching each other back and forth again. Uh, now Cole got him with a super kick. He got him with um, another kick then right after that. And then he tried to he put the chair on his neck. Which um, this is where it kind of got dumb because uh, the referee is now begging Cole to stop. Don't do this. Don't hit him with the chair around his neck. Cole just knocks out the referee, and then he does a Panama Sunrise and still gets the pin after you just knocked the fuck out the ref. So what did you expect from this? That doesn't make a lot of sense right there after you had the match won. But um, Cole starts slapping the referee, trying to wake him up, get up, get up, get up. And then, um, you know, he had the chair, tried to go for the chair again and slam, um, you know, Riley in the plexiglass and whatnot. Uh, but when he got to the outside on the ramp, then Cole threw a chair at him. And, um, was it O'Reilly? He grabbed him, I believe, and put him, like, into a guillotine choke. Both Cole and O'Reilly went through the stage then. Right after, Cole was able to get out of there and then kicked the side of the drive while pulling O'Reilly through it, putting him back in the ring, tried to go for a last shot again, but it did not work. So when O'Reilly didn't know what he was, he was near the steel steps. Cole just suplexed him onto the steps then. After that, leaving him there, um... Set him up for another last shot, but like I said, O'Reilly just kind of crumbled to the Mac, you know, exhausted and whatnot. Um, Cole tractor set him up again, even getting the chain and whatnot. But um, I'm trying to go for another pan my sunrise, but O'Reilly got out of it, hit him with a big Death Valley drive down to Cole. Uh, after that, hitting him with another kick, then he hit him with his own uh, last shot to the back of the head. O'Reilly um, basically got a steel chair then, kind of faced up, which you can impale somebody. Cole went to the top rope with him, saying, I'm going to end you right now. But O'Reilly low blowed him then after that. And then um, he knocked Cole well, onto the chair, putting him there. And then O'Reilly wrapped the chain around his knee, hitting, with a, hitting him with the big knee uh, to the back of Cole's head with the chain wrapped around it in the chair right there. Finally beating Adam Cole. So Kyle O'Reilly won this match after 40 freaking minutes, folks. This was long. Medics came out to um, take Cole away as O'Reilly walked out on his own. I almost expected Roderick Strong to show up since he's somewhat involved in this whole thing. But he did not, and O'Reilly walked out on his own uh, foot, okay? So I will say this about TakeOver. TakeOver was fun tonight. Some may well argue that night one may have been a little bit better. I still enjoyed night two, though, from the unsanctioned match. NXT title, I like the NXT title. Despite a lot of crazy booking and whatnot lately, I enjoyed this match uh, a lot, okay? This was fun to watch. Um, Balor and uh, Cross, that wasn't bad. The NXT tag titles, the women's ones, was kind of whatever I could have saw on a regular episode of NXT. Gargano and Reed, I'm up and down on in a way. It wasn't bad, but just, come on, man. He knows all the freaking razor's edge, and it's Gargano at the same time, too, sometimes. So, um... I was kind of like up and down on that match anyway, especially I was surprised Reed lost. Um, the Cruiserweight stuff was actually pretty good with the ladder match. That wasn't bad. Um, what else is on this show? So they're both title matches. Uh, yeah, I think I went through everything on this show now that I think about it. So, uh, 
yeah, I think I think that was it. Yeah, cruiserweight title, um, women's tag titles, North American title, unsanctioned NXT title. So yeah, I think I went through all of that. Okay, so that's that's my opinion on night two. So night one may have been a little bit better in a way. I think still because of that, uh, you know, freaking uh, Walter and Champa match that was just insane. But night two still had a lot of bang for it. Okay, a lot of bang for um, night two. Like I said, from the unsanctioned match to the NXT title to the um. To the ladder match, okay? That's what I thought was the best uh, matches of the night, in my opinion. So, uh, those are the ones I most likely enjoyed, all right? North American, I, like I said, was up and down on, and especially the women's tag match. Probably could have saw that on a regular episode of um, Women's Tag Chance. Well, I feel like if I was say another episode of, well, what was that going on about? Wow, I must be tired. Don't know what's going on with that, but... um. Yeah, that's my thoughts, all right? I thought it was, like, three matches I really liked from this show, all right? The other two, I was kind of like, whatever. But, yeah, that's my um, NXT TakeOver Stand Deliver Night 2 review, folks. Uh, like I said, there's a lot more reviews coming up this weekend. A lot of crazy stuff is still going on. But I enjoyed NXT tonight, and it was a really fun show. So, most of the predictions were very expected, uh, very expected, as I kind of knew. So, I'm uh, probably should do more of these predictions now that I think about it. But, um, yeah, that's what I expected out of this show tonight, all right? But other than that, though, that is my review. Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Hood Night 890. Tell me what you think about NXT TakeOver, Stand Deliver Night 2. We got Mania reviews still coming, all that stuff. Smackdown's tomorrow night. So, yeah, all right? That's my review of uh, TakeOver. So other than that, I got to go check out Impact. I forgot I was on Thursdays. I know there's a lot going on there. I may have a review for that maybe later on tonight or tomorrow, okay? We'll see where it goes for Impact after I check out the show. But, uh, yeah, this is my NXT TakeOver night to review all right uh very enjoyable very good show so i'm out of here i'll see you guys later comment subscribe follow me on twitter at hood 90 i'm repeating myself of course but uh yeah uh that's what i need to say about that so i'm out of here i'll see you guys later peace out